Good morning, more like God morning, everybody. This is Zipporah from Truth to Z, and this morning for today's devotional, it, okay, it's 11 34, it's not too late. But this morning, we are in the book of Ezekiel. Now, I actually, for the past couple of weeks, I should say, was reading through the book of Ezekiel. I praise Yahweh, I finally finished. Now, I think the book of Ezekiel is such an interesting book it goes i think 48 chapters all right let's try Forty eight chapters okay book chapters <laughs> i don't know why i was getting confused with the two there are 48 books in the book uh, in the book Oh my gosh, there are 48 chapters in the book of Isaiah. In the book of Ezekiel. Oh my gosh. There are 48 chapters in the book of Ezekiel. That is what it, the narrative is. There are 48 chapters in the book of Ezekiel. And it was a very interesting read. Honestly, when I first started reading the Ezekiel, I was so confused as to what was going on. There was a lot of like what seemed like fantasy descriptions of characters and things that were happening. It was just like really like, Lord, what is going on here? But uh, as we moved more deeper into the in the ch into the chapters, um, we start to see that God is talking about judgment. This entire book is about judgment. But God, with His judgment, and I'm, I, I'm, I want people to understand this: that until the final day of judgment, the ju day of judgment, where you're getting your sentence, pretty much of yes or no, God's purpose of His judgment on earth is so that people will repent. Uh, God himself in the Bible says that he doesn't find joy. He doesn't find pleasure in having to cast away his children. I don't know what that floaty is. <laughs> God doesn't find, you know, joy in this punishment that he has to curse his children. I mean, we are all his creation. Can you imagine like a parent who has three good children and one child that's just like really bad. Not listening to anything the, the parents say. It breaks a parent's heart to to see this for this behavior to be a thing um actually i was reading proverbs yesterday i think it was proverbs 10 yeah here it is it says proverbs 10 verse 1 it says a wise son brings joy to his father so a child only becomes wise once they listen to their parents instruction once they listen to the the laws of God, the laws of their parents. They're honoring their mother and their father. They're they're obeying. They're submitting. They're listening. They have been raised up in the way that they should go. And they're actually going in the way that they're raised. And it says here, but a foolish son brings but a foolish son brings heartache to his mother. And so we can also see see this as the same way to Yahweh. It breaks his heart when his children don't listen to him. Because what it really says about us, if we don't listen to God, is that we think that not only that we're above God, but that other people around us are above God. And I even heard a fellow brother or sister in Christ, I don't remember who, what it was. It was a fellow sibling in the Most High who said uh, something along the lines of that, you know, we trust the people who we have proof. They have a resume of failing us, these human beings on this earth. But we don't trust God who has a resume of not failing us and always coming through with the come through. And I thought that was so interesting. And oftentimes it's easier for us to try to put our faith in people that are around us because we see them. And a lot of times, especially as believers, we're very sympathetic. You know, we want, we want people to, we want to give people second chances. We want to see them, you know, revive themselves. We want to see them like come up and, you know, be men and women of their word to not lie and deceive you and let you down again like we always want these things for people and oftentimes it actually ends up becoming our own downfall because we're just hoping too much of others and God says not to trust any man and so we're back here in the book of Ezekiel and one of the things that um, I'm going to do a couple of videos on this. I actually think I'm going to do a series of us just going through the book of Ezekiel together, probably chapter by chapter. But right now, I'm just going to highlight some of the things that I see that are very important. So one of the interesting things that God does is like the first three-fourths 
of the book of Ezekiel is about punishment and judgment, specifically against Israel. Now, ever so often throughout the book, God talks about how he's going to use the, Israel's enemies, other nations, to chastise Israel as a part of their punishment. But then God also says that because those nations want to do wickedness to Israel, they're also going to get punished. But then the, the like, one-fourth, the latter one-fourth of Ezekiel is about the restoration of Israel. And God just kind of, you know, offers out his hand. He's saying, you're getting, you're getting toe up right now. But my hand is still out for you to reach for it so that you can be free, so that you can receive redemption. And the later half is God really just talking about how he's going to redeem Israel. But in the, this redemption is not just like, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be greater. While God is saying those things, he's also saying, and you're going to remember that the reason why, you, why you're here is because of me, my grace, my love, my mercy. But also don't forget all the wicked things that you did. Because that Israel had a cycle, and I did a video about this, and I'm probably going to do another one after this just to go a little bit more deeper into this like wicked cycle that they were just continuously in. But anyways, we're right now in Ezekiel chapter 28, and I want to read a few things here. Okay, God just pointed this out, and this is verse... One. We'll just start from verse one. It says, "The Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, which is Ezekiel speaking here. It's a son of man. Say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the Lord God or the Lord Yahweh says: Your heart is proud, and you have said, I am God. I sit in the seat of gods in the heart of the sea. This is what the king and the rulers of Tyre are saying. But this is what Yahweh says: Yet you are a man and not a god." Though you have regarded your heart as that of a god, yes, you are wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and understanding, you have acquired wealth for yourself. You have acquired gold and silver for your treasuries. By your great skills and training, you have increased your wealth. But your heart has become proud because of your wealth. And so I want to pause here. Actually, I'm going to say this first. Verse 6. Um, we'll do verses 6 to 8, I think. It says, verse 6, Therefore, this is what the Lord Yahweh says. Because you because you regarded your heart as that of a god, I am about to bring strangers against you, ruthless men from the nations. They will draw their swords against your magnificent wisdom and will pierce your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the hand in the heart of the sea. Will you, will you say I am God in the presence of those who slay you? Yet you will only be a man, not a god, in the hands of those who kill you. And you will die a death of the uncircumcised at the hands of strangers. For I have spoken. This is the declaration of the Lord. I actually read to verse 10. And so um, I took a few notes here. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is that we now this uh, what I notice about the God. When we look at the spiritual implications of what God is saying, he's not only talking about Tyre. Now, if we're talking about the historical context, yes, this is about Tyre. Um, and this nation God specifically talking about. But God also said that there's nothing new under the sun. And the same spirit that was here oppressing Tyre is the same spirit that is, you know, oppressing a lot of other of people today. This spirit. And what I wrote it was, it was pride and idol idolatry. Pride and idolatry. The fact that one would regard themselves as a god is to say that they believe that they are god. Like, they're, he's saying, like, I mean, hold on. Like, this guy is saying, this person this like spirit that is oppressing people that is in people that has that people have welcomed into them because the truth is people like this pride pride is very popular today that's why social media is so the way that it is because people are prideful they want everyone to see themselves they want everyone to love them and say that they're pretty and say that they're beautiful they want the compliments they want all those things they want all the pr stuff they want attention they want the spotlight to be on them and this is one of the things even with christian influencers they also want the same thing they want you to look at them and look at their experience and look at the things that they're doing it's like they want the attention on themselves and that's often especially with christian influencers where the the focus of yahweh becomes second place and and now they're just trying to make sure they get enough views so they can still get that TikTok money or that YouTube money. You know, this is what this was going on today. And so these people are struggling with pride and idolatry, two sins. And when you have pride, you regard yourself higher than the most high. Because if God is first, how are you first? You regard yourself as a God. And so God is saying that this person sees themselves as a God. And these, these people may not say it out of their mouth. They might not say that they are God like, like this person did. But they believe it. They believe it. They believe that they're on top of the world. They believe that they're undefeatable. And that's one of the things about a lot of celebrities and people of power today. They believe that 
even like God mentions here, because of their wealth, they've acquired wealth. The God says that they, they are wise that they have wisdom and understanding and that they've acquired wealth for themselves. So they, so because they, they, they've used this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and their skills and their abilities to get them more wealth, they now regard themselves as this high, mighty, you know, high, mighty people that, that got it all together. They think that they're gods. They're very prideful. They're very arrogant. They're very misled. They're very deceived. And God, God these, people, they, these people have this perspective that no matter what they do wrong, that they will never be punished for what they do. That's why we see a lot of celebrities do the wicked things. A lot of politicians do wicked things. Like they're abusing people. They're raping and molesting and like all kind of wicked things that a lot of celebrities and politicians are doing. But they think because of the power and the wealth that they have that they're untouchable. And God is saying, will you say, in verse 9 God says, will you say in front of the people that I am sending to kill you, that you are God? as they're killing you to the men that are there to take your life now in the beginning of ezekiel god calls them executioners that he's sending throughout the world to take a, to take out the people who are wicked now god specifically says he's killing those and that's one of the things that god is also saying today that he is killing our enemies he's killing the enemies of god he's killing the enemies of the children of israel he's killing his his enemies who are who are enemies against the people his his children in christ he's killing them they're literally dying god said the other day that they are dying as we're having a conversation d-y-i-n-g it's happening now and so god is saying to these wicked prideful arrogant idolatrous people who believe that they're gods will you say to the person to the people to the diseases, to the illnesses, to the mysterious things, to the supernatural things that God is sending to take your life as a punishment for your wickedness, your continuous unrepented wickedness. Will you say that you are a God in front of them? And then how can a God die? How can a God die? God is saying that he is literally sending people to take these wicked people's life he is and so one of the things i i'm gonna wrap it up here but one of the things i want to encourage you as believers is as you're seeing death know that it is a part of god's judgment right now that we god one of the things that god told ezekiel in this book uh, earlier on before chapter 28 when the executioners were going throughout first it started in the sanctuary they went throughout the entire nation of Israel to kill all of those who specifically did not do two things. There was before the executioners went out to kill God's enemies. Because the truth is, if you don't keep God's commandments, you don't love God and keep his commandments, you become his enemy. And I want us to understand that. That there are even Christians, Christians who have gave, given their life to Christ, who have surrendered their will for the Lord, supposedly. They've you know, they accepted Christ into their heart as their Lord and Savior. They are actually God's enemies if you do not follow his commandments. Israel became God's enemy after they were his children, his untouchable, his hedge of protection was off of them. God showed himself to Israel greater than probably he showed anyone else in the Bible. And they became his enemy because they wouldn't listen to him. And he destroyed them with his mighty right hand. And you don't want to be on that side of destruction. Because especially if you know the truth of God, if you have taken the call to accept God and come into covenant with him, and then you decide to not do what he says, yeah, it's not looking good for you. Because God's punishment is greater for his children because he has taken the time to nurture you. He has taken the time to train you up in the way that you should go. And then you decided not to go that way. And now it's just foolishness. Anyways, so... Early on, before the executioners went out, God sent that there said God sent a man with linen clothing and a pen in his hand. He was sent to mark as a mark of protection, as a mark of sealing those children of Israel who sighed and cried against the wickedness. Now I want I'm gonna do another video on this because it's so important for us to understand what this really means. These were not people who just kept God's commandments. These were not people who just went to church and did the things that they were supposed to do. These are people who actively proclaimed from the mountaintops 
against the wicked things that were being done in Israel. That means when they saw things happening wrong, like when you see someone acting a fool on the pulpit, you speak up about it. In any way that God is calling you to speak up, that means you got to go to that person who's acting a fool on the pulpit and you say that that's ridiculous behavior, you need to cut that out or God's wrath is going to come upon you. Or you go to other church members and you say, this is not right, we need to speak up. Or you go online and say, this is not right, we need to speak up. Or you send a letter and say, this is not right. Whatever you have to do, God is saying you need to use your mouth and speak up. God even actually said last year that he is looking for bold, righteous voices who would speak up against the wicked things that are happening on this earth. He's specifically waiting for those children to speak up against things like abortion, things like apostasy. These are detestable acts that are happening in the church that are often pushed under the rug. Things that don't glorify God in any way, shape, or form. People who are going to proclaim the word of God, encourage others to keep his law, to follow his commandments. He's waiting for those. And there are many of us who are speaking out today. And so God sent this person to seal his children and everyone else died. God, the sealer went first and sealed. And after the sealer sealed, then the executioners came and, and executed and Ezekiel cried out and he said, Lord, what is going on? Are you killing everybody? Who's going to be left? You, If you kill the entirety of Israel, who is going to be left? And Ezekiel was like, oh my gosh, Lord, everybody's dying. And God said, Ezekiel, pipe down with all of that weeping and too much. Everybody's not dying. Everybody's not dying. God knows that everybody's not dying because he sent the 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 script writer. I'm going to call it the, the, the sealer. The, we'll call him the sealer. He, God sent the sealer to go seal his children who actually sighed and cried against the wickedness. And so God, what, what we get an understanding from this is that there was a mass, mass people dying, mass murders. And if you've been in tune with a lot of the things that God's been telling a lot of his prophets, you would know that a lot of killing is coming. A lot of deaths are coming. And my encouragement to you children is to not weep. God told uh, Ezekiel, do not fast do not pray for these wicked people. And he was talking about the children of Israel. He said, if you pray for them, I won't hear you. I'm not going to listen to any prayers. Do not pray that I save them. Do not pray that I have mercy on them. Do not cry for them. You better get up and go and continue to the, proclaim the words that I'm telling you to proclaim. God said, don't cry for these people. When you see these deaf, know that it's because they didn't know Yahweh. It's either it was their time for them to die and they knew Yahweh or they're dying as a punishment because they didn't know him. And so God is saying, don't cry for these people. Don't pray for them. Don't pray that I have mercy on them. Pray that my will is done. That's the only thing we should be praying in this season, that God's will is done. Because the things that are happening is all in the hand of God. It's all in his mix. He is controlling this whole situation. He is ordaining this whole situation. Natural disasters are in his isn't are in his control. One of the things that we learn in Revelation is that God actually sends angels who have control over wind, thunderstorms, earthquakes. There are angels who are in charge of these things. It is God's doing. Now man has tried to manipulate and do a little strike a little electricity up there and then also they're going to come. They're playing. They're manipulating. They're doing witchcraft. But God has a full ultimate control. We have to understand that. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 says that all power, all power is given unto Yeshua the Messiah. All power. Satan and the kingdom of darkness don't got nothing on our Lord. And they don't got nothing on us, the children of the Most High. There's nothing that they can do against us. Unless God ordains it to be so. And so the one way that we get to where God is calling us to be in a nice, smooth, peaceful manner is if we don't, don't do the things that God said not to do. And we do do the things that God said to do. It's the only way. It is literally the only way. And so I encourage you guys to go read Ezekiel. It's such an informative book about God's punishment and God's wrath. And it really just goes to show that, that God is serious. I'm also reading the book of Joshua where God is taking the, the children of Israel. Uh, this was a transfer from Moses to Joshua in the leadership. And God is taking them to the promised land, to the land, to Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey for them. And one of the things that God had them do was as they're on their journey there, 
was killing and destroying all of these wicked nations. All of these wicked nations back to back to back. And then they rested. And then God said, get up again. We got to fight again. They're destroying these nations. God says men, women, children, babies, ox, donkeys, burn it down. Why? Because God's judgment is his judgment and it's pure. God's judgment is pure and we have to understand that. If God says they die, halas, yalla, let them die. Let them die. Let them die. God says that we should not rejoice when our enemies are suffering. Because then we're going to suffer. <laughs> and we shouldn't. But God's judgment is just. And one of the things that God said recently is to rejoice. For his vengeance. Rejoice. Because his vengeance is a beautiful thing. His vengeance is a promise. It's a literally a blessing. God's vengeance is prosperity. And a lot of children don't understand the way that God works. Now, God could just give you prosperity, but God prefers to do his judgment and simultaneously, just like on the judgment day. It's not going to be a judgment day for just the righteous and a judgment day for just the wicked. We're all going on the same day and we'll be hearing each other's ruling. We'll be hearing either go away from me. I never knew you or well done, I'm going to faithful servant. We're all going to be there and hear that. We're all going to be here in that for, for each other. All of us. Every single one of us human beings that are ever born and lived on this earth. Even those who died on this before they were ever born on this earth. Every human being that God has ever created will be there on judgment day. Receiving their judgment at the same time. The same day. Now, just thinking like how long is that going to take? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe time won't matter at that time. <laughs> but just like that happens on that day. And this is such a good revelation that God just gave me. God's judgment is also happening simultaneously on this earth. Because the way that God blessed Israel, the way that we see God blessing his children in the Bible, was the he would destroy the wicked people. The wicked people were also receiving their judgment. And their judgment was, was punishment for their wickedness. And as a result of their punishment for their wickedness, God would often use the Israelites to punish them. And guess what? As a result of that, the Israelites were blessed because they took the spoils and all the goodies that that nation lost because they're dead now. That is how Israel was blessed for their righteousness. And so we have to understand that God's judgment is judgment. Like a judgment, sometimes we think is just a bad thing. Judgment is just a ruling. If we look at the definition of judgment, let me see what Siri says. Define judgment. Judgment means... The ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. The ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. And that is exactly what God is doing. His judgment is him just saying, as a result of what I'm seeing, the things that I've considered, which is your heart, your actions, the words, your thoughts, your mind, everything about you, your soul, the things you do, the things you say, the things you think. God is saying, as a, I've considered all these things and now my decision is this. And if it's been wickedness, it's a punishment. If it's been righteousness, it's a blessing. And so God is doing those things simultaneously. And so as um, the wicked are suffering and being removed from their position to power, God said he's going to strip their wealth. He's going to show them that they're not God. He's going to show them that he is God. As God is doing those things simultaneously, his children are being blessed. His children are replacing these wicked people who have been in these positions. God is replacing them. They're being pushed out and God's people are are being moved in and so i don't know how we got here but praise yahweh because god's vengeance is a part of our blessing god's vengeance we can even say is like the first step in our blessing his vengeance one step closer one step closer and so i encourage you guys to go read the book of ezekiel go see the things that god is telling you to do today because god is moving and doing and it's important for us to we gotta know what he's doing we gotta know what the lord is up to guys we gotta know what the lord is up to and so this was ezekiel chapter 28 and this stuff is happening right now which is why i'm making so many videos on it because it's happening right now it's happening as we speak the other day it hailed it went from 80 degrees outside to hail thick 
like I'd never seen hail thick before. And I thought, oh, what's all that stuff hitting the tree? What's all that stuff hitting the car? I started off first small. It started off like little tiny pebbles. And I thought, what is that? It's like, is that acorn or something falling from the tree? Because the wind was blowing. And I thought, like, okay, maybe it's acorns. But then I started coming down and our windshield almost cracked. And I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, what the heck is going on? It's because God's judgment is here. I'm so, I was so shocked. I think that was like last week or two weeks ago. And I was so shocked when it happened. It went from like 80 degrees to hail. And I'm not sure if you guys saw in Mexico, it snowed and hailed in Mexico. Ice. They had to get shovels to shovel ice. You guys, you guys, these are the birthing pains. You know why I say that the birthing pains? Because it may seem super duper crazy, but it's not the craziest that it's going to get. God talks about in Matthew 24, Matthew 24. We're going to get there right now because I, like, I know like the videos on TikTok be like 30 minutes now. Good. Look at this. Because I was taking mad notes on Matthew 24. The revelation was coming. God says here. First of all, one of the things that God says is to ask, seek, and knock. The disciples asked how will they know that, that this is that the, the second coming, that you're coming again. How are we going to know? Like the world is wrapping up. They asked and they received. God says, this is the signs. Yeshua, verse 4 in Matthew 24, it says, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. First of all, the Jews, the synagogue is saying, because they're not the true Jews. The synagogue of Satan over there because they worship the devil. If let me tell you this if they don't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, they are Satan worshipers. We have to understand that it got to be thick up here. If they don't believe in Yeshua the Messiah, they're worshiping Satan and they're going to go to hell because Yeshua says the only way you can get to heaven, the only way you can get to the Father is through Yeshua the Messiah. God is Yeshua the Messiah, He came on the earth as a human being to save us. If you think you worship and loved God before, but you don't worship and love Yeshua the Messiah, you don't love him. And you're going to go to hell. And we have to understand that. We have to understand that. That's why I don't understand why Americans are so diehard to support the war over there in Israel. Those people don't believe in Yeshua the Messiah. And actually, if you were a Christian, you go over there and they'll probably stone you to death. Because they don't like us. They don't like us. They killed our Messiah. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. Read your Bible. Please. They're over there waiting for another Messiah. And they also have said previously that they think the Messiah is here. So let's focus on that. Let's see what the Lord is saying. Verse 6. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. So we hear rumors of wars. We hear we see wars going on right now. Russia and Ukraine. We see wars going on right now. But between Gaza and Israel. Or Palestine and Israel. Like we see these things are. These wars are actually happening. There's wars going on in America against the migrants and the citizens. There's wars going on right now. Then we see rumors of wars. There's rumors of wars against China and Taiwan. There's rumors with uh, against Russia, China, and against U.S. Like there's rumors of wars. These things are happening right now. God says, "See that you are not alarmed. Don't be don't be scared and spooked." Because these things must take place. But hold up, the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. Then the God also says here, uh, see, there will be famines, pestilences, earthquake, and diverse places. All the events are what? The beginning of labor pains. And if you've ever been pregnant, I don't know about this, but if you, I know that you have contractions. And there's like labor pains. It's like the contractions are going, do, 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 because your body preparing for the baby to come out. Our, the world is preparing for Christ to come. Do, 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 do. And, and the faster, the more frequent you get these, you're like, okay, the baby's coming. The baby's coming. <laughs> and that's how we're going to know your shoe is coming. And God says, hold up now. Because this is just the beginning. Then God tells us a whole bunch more things. And he tells us, these are just the beginning. These are not even tribulation. This is pre-trib stuff. This is pre-trib activities. And if you think you're going to fly away and be raptured, you're wrong. Okay, you're wrong. God would have raptured you already. We're already experiencing it. We're already in the pre-tribulation period. If you're waiting to be raptured before Christ's second coming, you have been greatly deceived. I'm going to leave it at that. 
It's time for people to wake up and read the Bible and stop listening to the liars on the pulpit. And I encourage you to stop listening to them now because when God exposes them and all their wickedness, you're going to feel really stupid the fact that you stayed and God was telling you that they're liars. Anyways, this is the Poor From Truth to Z and I love you guys, which is why I gave you all this information. As we seek the truth, we are also seeking Yahweh.